today we're doing a SketchUp Q&A, and today I'm answering a question from Saitanto, and he asks, how to model this boat base? Okay, so I imported this 3D boat base from the 3D warehouse based on a link that Saitanto gave me. Um, and it's modeled by a guy named Michael P. And I quickly looked at this and you can see that um, there's some geometry that's a little wonky uh, going on in here. So what I'm going to do today is show you a few different ways that you can make this. Um, and I'm going to use parts of this uh, model so I don't have to draw all the lines. Um, but we're going to be constructing it almost from scratch. A few things that we're going to focus on is how to make this exactly. Um, how to make this in what I think is is a more aesthetic way um, and then the final way is the quickest way to make something that is sort of like this. So the first step is really understanding this geometry and how it's made. Um, so and I don't mean that in how you model it I mean like what sort of geometries make it up. So uh, you can see that there's sort of this gothic arch this elongated gothic arch at the top uh, and there's a smaller one at the bottom and those two shapes sort of morph into each other. Uh, one thing that I realized after bringing this in is that the shape actually, um, if I take this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to explode all of this and make this a group. What I realized is that um, all of these arches are actually the same. So if I take this arch and copy it, you can see that those arches are just offset um, around this curve. So um, I'm going to copy what was done here so that it will be closely like that. But basically all you have to do to make this is to make an arch uh, here and then copy these, um, these angled pieces along that arch. Um, and I'm going to show you, after you have that, what you can do. So the first and quickest way to do this um, is what I'm going to do is select this. And I'm just going to have this little arch here. This little, this sort of template. And I'm going to hit uh, move and just copy these. So I'm hitting control when I do this to, uh, so I'm moving it and then hit control to make a copy. So I have those arches. And then what I'm gonna do is select all. And then I'm holding control uh, shift to deselect the model. And then I'll move this off to the side. So uh, there I have all those arches. I'm going to, um, Explode these. Make this a component. Let's say um, model number one. What I'm going to do is copy this, hit S for scale, move this negative one. So it'll move that all the way over. And then I'm going to copy this. to here, I have that shape, um, <clears throat> and I'm going to extend these lines, make sure that I'm not moving, nope, just make sure that I'm not moving those other lines. And then what I'm going to simply do is select all of these. So it's it's selecting the other side, it looks like it is, but it's just one component. And then go to uh, draw sandbox from contours. And so you can see I have this, um, this shape here. And I can edit this a little bit. And then I probably want to flip this face so it's not on the blue side. Uh, reverse faces. 
And then from here, pretty simple to just draw. And then uh, I don't want to go all the way across since I have a group here. And then right click, hide, and, and I have this boat. So it's a, it's a little bit different, um, but this is the quickest way to do that. Um, and maybe if I want, I'd come in here, right click smooth, soften faces. I'm going to drag over my default tray. Um, and I could smooth and soften these faces if I wanted to. Um, so you can see it, it, it's similar, the shape is similar, but it's not exactly this. Um, so that's method one. And if I wanted to, let's say I just want to close this in on the top. In here, and not close this in, take this, hide it. Similar, but I don't have this faceting that's going on uh, in the other model. So, if I want to get that faceting, what I'll do is I'm going to copy this over, right click, make unique. I'm going to delete these faces. Uh, I'm going to keep what is here, um, but I don't need a lot of this stuff. So I don't need like these flat lines here. Like this, stretch it here. So if you wanted to, to make the faceting, what I need to do is manually come in here and um, close off all these shapes. And uh, I'm not going to make you sit through this. I'm just going to show you the first uh, one or two. Um, so I'm just coming around here and closing off these shapes. I'm looking for the, the green dots that say endpoint. And then um, click in to close it off. And do the same at the top. Just wait till it turns green. And then that means that you're at your endpoint. And you just do that for all of them. Now, if it doesn't close, you need to come and check. So you can see that in 3D, I didn't select the right. There you go. So this is a little bit tedious. Um, but this is, I think, the way that they did that. But what's helpful about the way that we are doing it as opposed to the way that uh, this original model was created is that um, you can see that on this side the shape is different so this actually isn't entirely symmetrical so our shape will be entirely symmetrical because we're using a component and we've mirrored it um, but I'm gonna come back in a little bit after I've done this and show you what we got all right so I finished modeling this face here uh, you can see that we have the same sort of facets that are on the original boat. Um, there's even the same number. Um, and then what I'm just gonna do here is finish out this shape. Make sure I'm on the red axis. I'm holding shift to lock to that axis. Um, didn't mean to draw a line there. Draw here, go down, and come all the way across. Hide this line, hide this bottom line here. And then again, what I'm going to do is copy this over, S for scale, go this way, negative one, so that we're mirroring it, bring it back, and you can see that we have our boat. Maybe I want to flip this face, so it's white. Um, I have pretty much the exact same thing. And I have a line in here, but I don't want that. Hide this. Maybe you're not a fan of the faceted look. Um, I'm not necessarily, if I was modeling, I wouldn't want to see these, um, you know, and you could always just come in here and, and turn off the edges, uh, but you still get those facets so you can still see them. So what you might decide to do, let me turn these edges back on. What you might decide to do is come in here, right click and go to smooth soften edges. 
Let me just drag my default tray over here from the other window uh, and just play with the slider. The way that I like to use smooth soften edges is to um, do the least amount to get what I want. Uh, and before doing this, you may want to make a copy uh, or save as so that you have your file to go back to. Uh, it's hard to sort of, once you have this and you've set it, it's hard to go back. Uh, so, um, so maybe this is what you want, but you can see that this edge here has started to s sort of warp a little bit. At least it looks like it's warping. There's some weird shading going on. So uh, maybe that's not what you want. Maybe you just want this area here to be uh, shaded. So what I'm gonna do is select that and then come in here, hit Control and Shift. You can see my mouse has a little minus arrow next to it. Um, and just deselect the edges on this side. Now what that's gonna do is it's going to, um, I'm just gonna come in here and select some of these things on the edge. I just don't want this line here. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna soften but it's just gonna soften what I have selected. So if I soften in here, you can see, it looks like maybe I had this line deselected. I just select that line. Um, so now I just have that edge uh, softened. And uh, if I deselect, you can see that I have a nice smooth edge. Uh, this is still hard, but maybe you wanna hide that. So you come in, deselect this top part, select this bottom part maybe I want to hide this too and hit hidden oh not hidden geometry and then come in and hit hide so I have a nice smooth edge here um, and then it goes to this round edge here and, and you can see that I'm missing this line here I must have accidentally done that if you hit hidden geometry uh, you can then select that line and hit unhide. Um, and I can do that for this whole edge. Maybe that's important to me to have that defined shape at the bottom. Unhide, select it. Uh, you know what happened? Uh, for this, I smoothed this bottom part portion. So uh, what I'm just going to do is recreate it because that's easy. Okay, so there's our final model. Um, I think this looks really good. Um, and I think it obviously is, is very similar to what, um, what was made. Uh, we started with facets and then uh, we sort of rounded it out so we got this smooth edge. Uh, I'm obviously a fan of the way that we did it, uh, but uh, you know how to make it this way if that's the way you prefer as well. Thanks for watching. As always, thanks for smashing that like button, subscribing, and commenting on this video. If you have any questions that you'd like to have answered, please don't hesitate to leave them in the comments below. And as always, happy hacking. All right, designers. Just because this episode of Designer Hacks is over doesn't mean we're leaving you out in the cold. Tony's got tons of great content available at designerhacks.com. So join Design Nation right now, and we'll see you on the next episode of Designer Hacks.